Hello everyone, welcome back to Xcoding with Alvian. In this quick tutorial video, we're going to explore about new CVUI two views, outline group and disclosure group. And we'll see how we can use them to represent a hierarchical data in a list inside our UI. Before we begin, please like and subscribe to this channel to support me moving forward. So without further ado, Let's begin and code. Okay, so let's move on to the first example, which is showing the list of items that have nested items inside of them. Let's take a look at the demo of the UI we'll build. Let me open the simulator. At the root level, we have items such as computers, smartphones, tablets, and wearables. Inside the computers, we have desktops and laptops. Inside the desktops, we have the children such as iMac, Mac Mini, and Mac Pro. For the children of the laptops, we have MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. In this case, the depth of the computer is 1, 2, and 3. Inside the smartphones, we have the children such as iPhone 11, iPhone XR, iPhone XX Max, and iPhone X. In this case, the depth of the children is 2. And for the tablets, we have the depth of the children with 3 as the maximum depth. Let's dive into Xcode and learn how we can use if UI to build this UI with very minimal lines of code. Create a new Xcode project. Give it a name that you prefer to. First, let's create a model to represent the list item category. Create a new file named item.swift. Declare the item as a struct that conforms to identifiable protocol. Let's declare the ID property to satisfy the protocol requirement. We'll use the UID as the type of the ID and also assign it with the default value. Next, let's declare the title property with type of string. We'll use this to render the text. Continuing on, to represent the children in the hierarchy, we need to declare the property containing the array of the item, as this will be used by Shift UI to determine whether the current item has children. Let's declare it and name it as a children, and also set it as an optional. Let's move on to the view. Create a new Shift UI file named itemList.swift. Declare an instance property named items, which is an array of item. Inside the body implementation, we just need to initialize list passing the items. Then, to enable the nesting of the children, we need to pass the key path property name that contains the array of the model to the children parameter. In our case, we can pass the children key path. Inside the view builder closure, we just need to render the item with a text using the title of the item. Before we can preview our UI in the live preview, we need to inject the stop data. At the bottom, let's create an extension for the item to help us stop the model. Declare the static constant stops with type of item array. The first item will be computers. It has two children, desktops and laptops. The desktops has three children, iMac, Mac Pro, and Mac Mini.
The laptop has two children, MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. Let's try this first. We just need to pass this when initializing the item list inside the preview like so. The computers is shown in the preview with a disclosure indicator. Enable interaction in the live preview. Make sure to press on the play button. Let's click on the indicator. Cool. It expands to show the desktops and laptops. Let, let's expand the desktops and laptops also. Nice. As you can see, with only three lines of code, we're able to show hierarchical data inside our Swift UI list. It works recursively until the item has no more children. You might be wondering how we can display different kind of fields and data in the list. No worries, we can use the new outline group to handle this scenario. Let's take a look at the second demo. Let's see. We have a sidebar containing the list of menu items and the hierarchical items. At the top, we have the menu, then at the middle, we have the items. Finally, at the bottom, we have the settings section, which is also expandable and collapsible. It has account, help, and logout menus. Let's create a new Swift UI view named setBarList.Swift. Declare an instance property named Items, which is an array of item model. Let's pass the stop items in the preview class to the initializer and activate the live preview. In the body implementation, declare an empty list. Also, Add a lifestyle modifier, passing the newly available setbar style. This style is suitable for a setbar list of menus. Under closure, declare a label passing home as the title and house as the system image. Label is a new view in CVUI2 that renders a text as the leading item and an SF symbol image as the trailing item. To render the hierarchical items in the list, we can use the outline group, passing the array of items and key path of the children property, containing the array of the items. In the view builder closure, we can just render a text using the title of the item. Let's try to expand and collapse the items from the live preview. Nice, everything is working smoothly. Let's move to the bottom section. By using a sidebar style as the list style, we can use section view. This will add the expand and collapse behavior automatically inside the section. Let's implement this. Declare a section, then pass the text with setting string as the header. In the view builder, declare the three labels. Run the live preview. The settings section now provides the disclosure indicator, where we can use it to expand or collapse the section. Awesome. Last, I want to show you the disclosure group, which we can use to add expand and collapse behavior for a group of views within the same hierarchy. Let me show you the demo video of the form we'll build. At the top of the form, we have the personal information section, containing the text fields for names and email. We have a data picker for birthday. The section within the form can be collapsed or expanded, and the default state for the personal info section is expanded. In the next section, we have the notification preferences section. It has three toggles, where user can opt in to receive notification via email, SMS or push, or the section is collapsed. Let's go back to Xcode and implement the form using Disclosure Group. 
create a new Swift UI file named from list.swift. In the body implementation, declare the form as the root view. Let's put it inside a section. In the view builder, declare a disclosure group. Let's declare the text fields and that picker. For the simplicity of this example, I just pass an inline constant as the binding instead of passing state properties. Let's set the label parameter with the text passing personal information string. This syntax is part of the multiple trailing closure feature of C5.3. Let's see the results in the live preview by clicking on the disclosure indicator. Yeah, we can expand and collapse the section. Looks like it's working perfectly. Next, let's declare the notification preferences section. Declare a disclosure group. In the view builder, declare the three toggles like so. For the label, just pass the text containing the notification preferences setting string. Let's try it in the live preview. To control the expand and collapse state of a disclosure group manually, we can pass a binding containing a boolean. Let's declare a state property, is profile section expanded, and ascend true as the default value. We can pass the binding of the state to the x expanded parameter. Let's rebuild the app and run the live preview. As we can see, the profile section has an expanded state as the default behavior. Okay, so that's it for the practical videos and examples of how we can use the outline group and disclosure group to build a hierarchical data in our UI. I've provided the completed project GitHub repository at the description below. You can also watch the related WWDC 2020 session video to learn more about how they work. You will be amazed that at the implementation level, Apple basically used the outline group and disclosure group recursively to represent the nesting inside the list and the outline group. So, until the next video, let's keep the lifelong learning goes on. Bye!